Uh, so today's session is uh, flying by the seat of your pants equals rough landing. Um, are your sales efforts getting results? Busy doesn't always equal successful. So you might need a better plan. Join award-winning sales professional Kelly Finelli, who's the membership director at the Chamber of Commerce of the Palm Beaches, who will teach you how to tie all your sales activities together to close more membership sales. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much, John. Okay, so here we are, flying by the seat of our pants. Um, and I want to welcome you guys, and thank you very much for joining us. A um, couple things. First of all, you know, when I started in the chamber, I had come from a background in special events. And I worked with convention groups that would come from all over the country to Palm Beach and bring a 1,000 IBM, IBMers or whatever. And most of my clients were spread around the country. I really didn't have any local contacts. So when I came to the chamber, they gave me a phone and a desk and sort of said, good luck. And the first six months were pretty rough. So I was definitely flying by the seat of my pants. And I definitely had my share of rough landing. So I learned all this stuff the hard way. And I figure you guys might as well benefit from some of my mistakes. I also have a great perspective in having been a member of my chamber three different times, twice with companies that I own myself, and once with a financial services company I did marketing for. So I do have that nice perspective of kind of knowing what the chamber members are looking for as they're developing their business in the chamber. So why did I, why did I choose this airplane analogy? For a couple of reasons. First of all, you wouldn't go to an airport and just jump on any plane. And that's kind of what most salespeople do. They just jump on a plane and hope for the best. You need a plane that is, number one, going to your destination, and number two, traveling with the right people. Um, planes also run on very tight schedules, and we're going to talk quite a bit about good time management. Um, then you don't have to jump ship like these poor guys. Waste your time, which, of course, equals very bad time management, and time management and is also slightly suicidal. So you need a plan. Um, so we're going to design a plan that sort of ties together all your activities so, as we said, you can be productive and not just busy. And these are some of the things that we're going to incorporate into your flight plan. And we're going to talk a lot in the beginning about prospects and how to turn those prospects into new members. So who are they? Where are they? How are we going to get you started? Talk about getting the meeting with your prospects, your actual meeting, closing, a little about referrals, and also testimonials. Before we do that, I want to clarify a little bit of language. I'm going to be using the word prospect a lot. And I'm going to be attaching a very specific meaning to that. So let's talk about suspects versus prospects. A suspect is somebody that might be interested in chamber membership. It is a very vague sort of person, not at all a specific individual. A prospect, on the other hand, is talking about someone that is definitely interested in chamber membership. And again, I'm talking about a very specific person. And that person has three things in common. First of all, it's the right person. It's the decision maker. Or we haven't really reached a good prospect yet. Again, we're wasting our time. Number two, they need what we're selling. They need a chamber membership, and they know it. Our job is to make them understand how that's going to work for them and paint a picture of how the chamber is going to help them, or we haven't really yet turned them into good prospects. And then thirdly, they can afford what we're selling. They can afford a chamber membership because they may be the right person. They may understand that they really need a chamber membership, but if they can't afford one, then they're really not a good prospect. So let's start with where are they? OK, some of you guys are working in very specific geographical territories. So I'm talking about that, but I'm also talking about where they are in the timeline of their business. Are they a new business? Are they an existing business, an established business that's looking to grow? Or are they a very well-established business that's looking to expand into totally two market, new markets or add new prospects, new products and services to what their company is offering? 
where they are in that timeline of their business will influence greatly what kind of conversations we're going to have and which elements of your chamber programming is going to best meet their needs. So let's talk a little bit about new businesses. Um, you know, they need a lot of help, so they make very good prospects. They can really benefit from a chamber membership. Frankly, some of them will go out of business in their first year if they don't get some kind of help, and, and we can be that help. Um, I purchase uh, occupational licenses from our local tax offices, and they work very well for me. First of all, they're legitimate businesses, which, of course, make lovely chamber members. Um, they've purchased a license, so they're used to the idea that they're going to have to be investing in their business. And those occupational licenses give me a lot of accurate contact information. It also allows me to target certain business categories where I'm historically very successful, or it allows me to target business categories where I'm looking for an expanded market share. Let's move to grand openings. I love grand openings. I love seeing grand opening signs. Um, of course, they're new businesses, and we can certainly help them a lot. And those grand opening signs tell me that they recognize they need visibility. So visibility is one thing that we can definitely offer them. Also, grand opening celebrations tend to include their circles of influence their bankers, their CPAs, their marketing agency or consultants, their best clients, maybe even their neighbors, other tenants in their building or other stores in their shopping center, all great prospects for me. And I even do very well with some of the vendors at the grand opening, the caterers, the tent companies, people uh, supplying them rentals, entertainers, musicians, all of those people are great prospects. So grand openings can be very, very productive. Existing businesses. Here are two of my favorite places to find existing businesses. Networking and advertisers. I go to a lot of networking functions. Um, I collect a lot of business cards, and I learned a long time ago that I need to make that as efficient as possible. So I put notes on the back of the cards. I actually sit in my car and put notes on before I leave the parking lot. So that helps me with my time management, and it also keeps me from wasting a lot of time flipping through the cards trying to remember which is the contact that I'm really looking for. And so these are the things that I put on the back of the cards. Where did I meet them? This includes the location, and it also includes the date and the time of the event. And then I'll include one intimate detail. It may be that they had a great tie, um, that they had a dress that I loved, that they were very, wearing fabulous shoes. It may be that we had an interest in common, maybe sports, maybe movies, books, or music. But I'll include some kind of intimate detail. And then I will put either a little P with a circle around it, which is an indicator to me that this is a good prospective chamber member, or I will put an S and an A with a circle around it, which in my chamber world means that it is a good strategic alliance or a good person who's in a position to send me multiple referrals. So networking is my absolute favorite. Advertisers also work very, very well. People who are at networking events are already doing one of the things we do best. If they're at a networking function that's not a chamber event, then I bring them to one of ours, they are going to love it. And advertisers make great prospects too. Advertisers tend to be very solvent. They're purchasing advertising, so they're spending money. They tend to be leaders in their field, which also make excellent chamber members. And where do I look for advertisers? Well, I look for them on billboards. I look for them on the internet. Um, I look for them in things like Groupons, delivery trucks, all kinds of different places. So successful business owners are always looking for new ways to grow their business. It may be through networking. It may be through advertising. Um, in our chamber, we, um, we have a kind of a focus on digital media. We do that through seminars. And I'd like to do a quick little poll here on digital and social media to find out how many of you guys are using social media to develop new members. You'll see that there's a little poll 
that should be coming up on your screen. Yep. John, Those can you help coming us? In, Kelly. Okay. I find that um, social and digital media is a real interesting topic in the chamber world these days. Uh, we have some members who are using it very well, and we have some members who are using it very badly, and then we have some members who are not using it at all. So I'm curious as to how well or how much you guys are using it in your pursuit of new members. All right, so let's, uh, let's take a look at the results. And uh, here are the results. Uh, looks like 44% from Facebook, 31% LinkedIn, 4% Twitter, and 22% don't use social media to get new members, Kelly. Interesting. Okay. Well, that tells me some interesting things about us and how we're using social media in the, in the chamber world. So thank you for that. I appreciate that. Okay. So back to the flying by our seat. We've got our contacts. Now what? How are we going to turn these contacts into new members? I use three questions. I don't usually say, tell me about your business. First of all, it's a little too vague. It allows them to babble, which is bad time management. Um, questions engage them. Um, they love talking about themselves. It gives me very specific information. And so these are the questions that I use. What do you do? Well, why do I ask this? Well, first of all, of course, I need to know a little bit about what they do. Um, secondly, I can match programming based on what's going to meet their needs or their business categories. How well they communicate that can tell me a lot. If they can do it well, first of all, they give me really quick insights as to what they do. And that's a skill that's going to make them a very successful chamber member. And it may even make them a good strategic alliance or source of referrals for me. It will also tell me how much help they need. If they can't answer it well, they're going to need a lot of help. And I have some programming that I can refer them to that will really help them with that. My second question is, how long have you been doing it? This tells me, again, a little bit about what kind of programming they'll respond to the best, what kind of communication tools that the chamber uses will work best for them as well. If they're new, they might be new in their position. They might need some help coming up to speed. that The chamber can help with them with that. Um, they might be new in their career and they're just starting out fresh out of college um, or they have a brand new business. Uh, that tells me a lot about how I can help them. They may be, again, straight out of college. If they're a younger member, then they'll probably be interested in our social media. So I'll plug them right into that. If they've been around a while, then they probably need some help to get to the next level and the chamber can help them with that as well. And if they're an older person, I might plug them into some more traditional type of chamber programming and some communication tools like advertising and sponsorships. Um, if they're forward thinkers, they may be interested in the social media content as well. Who do you want to meet is the third question I ask them. Maybe they know a specific person. Great. I can facilitate an introduction and they will love me forever. Maybe they're a little vaguer. They don't have a specific person. I might invite them to an event so they can meet a lot of different people. Or have them visit a group within the chamber. Maybe there's a committee that works particularly well for their business category. If they're older, I'll have them visit a category that, uh, visit a committee that maybe is involving some of those older members. Um, if they're a senior level executive, I might have them visit a trustee event, which is our executive level networking group within the, cha within the chamber. Or I might have them meet with one of my board members. If they're a younger person, then I'll invite them to one of our young professionals events. We've got a great young professionals group. Um, they love networking with their peers. They're very comfortable there. And I will definitely plug them into the social media programming because they'll take advantage of that and it's going to work very well for them. So we've got our three questions answered. We've got some good insights into them, and we're ready to work, to move to the next step. Um, so we need to go. We need to get the meeting now. And really, of course, the best way to do that is to pick up the phone and call them. But if you're not getting through to them, and you're leaving a bunch of messages, 
you need to move beyond just asking for the appointment, and you need to not doom them to a never-ending round of phone tag. Um, my rule is kind of two messages. If I don't get a hold of them in two messages, I'm afraid that I'm sending them a message that either a subliminal message that I'm too busy, and that's going to make them nervous because they're going to think I really don't have time to help them, or this just isn't working, and they're going to lose interest. Either way, leaving multiple messages and playing phone tag is bad time management, and I try not to do it. So here is a copy of an article that I wrote for our monthly newsletter, The Business Watch. Um, you'll notice that it's written for members, so it's not specific to chamber membership. I also use it in a seminar, and our members really like it. So it begins like this. Once you've been to a chamber networking event and collected business cards, you're ready for the most important part, follow-up. If you do that well, you're way ahead of the game since this is where most people drop the ball. Personal phone calls are best, but if you're having trouble getting in touch with someone, don't doom them to a never-ending game of phone tag. Send them an email. Okay, let's take a look at the first paragraph here. Dear so-and-so, it was great meeting you at the chamber event. I'd love to see you at it. I'd love to set up an appointment to get together and see if we can help each other grow our businesses. I'm available either next Tuesday, whatever that date is, at noon, or we could meet for a cup of coffee on Wednesday, anytime between 8.30 and 10. What works best for you? Okay, what am I doing here? First of all, I'm using the notes on the back of my card. Um, obviously, I may not have met them at a chamber event, but I have a note on that card as to where we met. So that will help me a lot. Um, you know, it shows them that I remember them because I know where we met. And it also helps them remember me because that inclination to meet a lot of people and sometimes forget people is strong in all of us. And if I can throw them a little clue as to where they met me, it will really help. So on to the next paragraph. To make our meeting as productive as possible, it would be great if you would bring along a top ten list a list of 10 companies you were looking for contacts in or business categories that you're looking for clients in. Chances are I will know someone that will be a useful contact for you and this will help us identify them sooner. I'll also bring along a list and maybe you'll know someone at one of the companies. If not, no problem. I'm mainly interested in learning about your company. Then if one of my contacts, contacts needs your product or service, I'll be able to send you a referral. Okay. What am I doing here? I'm referencing a top 10 list. Um, if they know what that is, that means that they probably wouldn't have been to one of my seminars, which gives me a big clue, and we can move along a little bit quicker. If they bring it, fabulous, because I can really help them. Chances are I'll know somebody on that list, and they'll love me forever. If they bring it, and it's a good one, then I know that they might be a good strategic alliance for me. They may be able to become a good source of referrals. If they don't know what it is at all, and they don't understand, then they need to come to one of my seminars, and that's great. I can invite them to one, and they'll love that. If they don't bring it because they're just lazy and they didn't bring it, that doesn't make them a terrible person. It just means that they might not be a particularly great contact for me. <laughs> also, I've said no problem, because remember, we're pursuing a chamber member. We want to let them off the hook. We don't want to make them uncomfortable. And then I'm saying that perhaps I'll be able to send them a referral. What do you think the chances are they're going to take the appointment with me? Very high. We all want referrals. So this is getting us off on a very good start. OK, the last paragraph. I'll plan on spending about 45 minutes or an hour together. I'll also bring along some information on my company. I'm looking forward to learning more about you and having a fun and productive meeting. OK, I'm, spending on, I'm planning on spending about 45 minutes together. Um, this is good time management for me. It allows me to run a nice, tight calendar. It's also telling them that I respect their time, which is very important. I'll bring along some information on my company. This is last, and I'm leaving it last very purposefully. This appointment is about them. It's not about me, and that will help them want to take that appointment and help them understand that I really want to help them. Okay, experts agree that appropriate follow-up is a critical ingredient to building a profitable relationship with a potential customer or client. It demonstrates your level of business ethics and, and personal commitment to excellence. 
It also gives that prospect the assurance that that same level of professionalism will continue after the sale is complete. Most importantly, it provides them with the comfort level they need to refer you to their own contacts. Once you have a consistent flow of referrals coming from happy clients, your business will grow proportionately. It's the best possible scenario for building a powerful network and provides you with referrals for your important contacts too. So this is a tool that's worked really well for me. Um, I include it in one of the seminars that I do and our members really love it. It always cracks me up when somebody will call and say, I just got an email from so-and-so. They obviously went to your seminar because they used your format. So I find that very flattering and, and it tells me that it really works for them, which is great. Okay, I'm also, you know, top 10 lists are great tools. Um, they work very, very well for me and they work very well for my members. Once you teach them how to use them properly, it can really have a powerful impact on their businesses and also puts you in an excellent light. You are really helping them with some very tangible tools. And I've also included here for you my top 10 list. Um, and you can see it's got um, a little bit of information on contacts that I'm looking for. Um, it has some very specific individuals, uh, the Miami Children's Hospital, Karen, um, Sam from the Capital Group, Dawn from uh, the private bank. It has some companies that I'm looking for contacts in. I don't really have them necessarily. Um, the Cancer Institute. Um, I'm looking for certain business categories, so I've given them that as well. New restaurants, attorneys, marketing managers, sales managers, those types of things. And I've also included an introduction because I want to make it very easy for my contacts to use this. So I've given them a way to introduce me that will make it really easy for them. And then I've given them a sweet spot. Uh, a sweet spot is really a description of what I'm looking for. So they have a prayer of remembering it so that it'll help them identify them as quickly as possible. And you can see I've told them I'm looking for um, businesses in Palm Beach County especially in the West Palm area. Of course, I have members from out of state that join our chamber because they want a presence in this particular business community, but I'm giving them a little parameter to make it a bit easier for them. Um, also, going back to that introduction for a moment, I want to make it easy for them, but you'll notice also that I focused on some of the things that we do best. I've talked about networking events and seminars. I've talked about visibility tools like the website, directories, newsletters. And then I've thrown in something that will work even if they never come to an event. Things like those visibility tools. They're still relative to them even if I never get them to an event because some of our members will come to events and some of them don't. And we still need to be relevant for them and make sure that we're really, we're, we're speaking to them as well. So I use these all over the place. Um, I take them to my one-on-one -on -one meetings. I encourage those people to share it with their contacts. You know, there's that six or seven degrees of separation thing. Here in the West Palm area, I think it's more like three. So generally speaking, they're going to know somebody on my list or they'll know somebody who knows somebody on my list. Um, I also use it a lot with my ambassadors. I have them bring a top ten list to all of the monthly meetings and then I copy them so that everybody leaves with each other's top ten list. It, um, it helps them be interested in coming to the meetings. It helps the meetings be very productive for them. And they often develop legs outside of your immediate contacts. People will share them with other folks. And you will be very surprised at how well this works. OK, so that's a little bit about top 10 lists. Um, you're going to need to sort of develop your own. Also, top 10 lists should be, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, they should be fluid. When I get out my top ten list, if I had reached for it last week and it has the exact same people and the same business categories and it looks exactly the same, that's kind of a red flag for me. I need to be having met Karen and pulled her off that list. I need to have already worked very consistently in the attorney arena. Now I'm looking for, um, you know, might be insurance professionals. So my top 10 list is always kind of evolving and changing. And then that way, too, when I go have another meeting with one of my important contacts, I've got some new additional information for them to take a look at. So develop your own top 10 list. I think you're going to find it's a very useful tool. All right. 
So um, we've got our appointment. We did it either over the phone or we achieved it through an email. Now we are ready for your meeting, the most important part. Let's talk a little bit about that. OK. Who, what, when, where, why. These are all important elements of you planning an agenda and achieving a productive meeting. So let's talk about who. We need the right person. We need the decision maker. If it's not the decision maker, it's not a prospect yet. I have a phrase that I use to, to make sure that I'm really getting that person and all of the right people at the table. And this is the phrase. It goes like this. Is there anyone else whose input we will need to decide if a chamber membership is right for you? Sometimes they'll say, um, oh yeah, you know, my business partner needs to be involved in this. Great. Are they available next Tuesday or whatever the day is that we set the appointment? Sometimes they'll say, oh yeah, you know, my wife and I make all these decisions. Great. Is she available? They might say, you know, I talk to my dog about everything. Wonderful. Is your dog available? Whatever it is. We want to be sure that we have the right people at the meeting. Otherwise, we're going to have to schedule a second meeting, and we're just wasting our time. So very important to be sure that we have the decision makers and all of them included in our meeting. OK. All right, so we've got all the right people. We've got them at the meeting. We're ready for our next step, which is what? What is also important? Um, what are we doing here? What kind of relationship do we want with this person? So let's go back to the notes on the card. Is there a P with a circle on it? Great. That's a great prospective chamber member. I know exactly what type of conversation I'm going to have with them. If it has an SA with a circle around it, that means that it may be a great strategic alliance. Wonderful, because I know the smart way to grow my membership is through powerful referral sources. So I'm going to include a different type of conversation in that as well. That will tell me a lot about what direction I'm going to go, on, go in, and I want to be clear about that before I get to the meeting, because again, I'm looking for very productive meetings, and I'm working on my time management. So we have the who. We have the what. Let's go to when. OK, back to the notes on the card. Remember I wrote down where I met them. I also wrote down what time. OK, if this was a morning meeting, then this is probably a morning person. I'm going to want to schedule something in the morning with them. I'm not going to do it in the afternoon when they're exhausted and cranky. That's not going to work well. Um, if it was a noon event somewhere, wonderful. Then maybe I will set an appointment to have lunch with them. There's something very intimate about breaking bread with someone. It's a great way to build a strong relationship with them. I love noon appointments. If I met them at an after hours function, I'm certainly not going to set up a morning appointment. They're going to be groggy. They're going to be cranky. Not good. I want to have them at their absolute best. So when I schedule the appointment is also very important. OK, so we've got that under our belts. Now we are ready for where. And where we have the appointment makes a really big difference. Let's talk about that for a second. Yours. Your appointment, I mean your office, your building, your store, neutral ground, or mine, you're coming here to the chamber. Let's go back to yours for a second. Um, sometimes this is really good. I can learn a lot about being in someone's business. Um, the location can tell me a lot about what type of company they are and what, maybe what kind of contact they're looking for. Um, our chamber membership due schedule is, stru is structured by the number of employees that they have for most business categories. So if I walk in and I see a huge office with lots of employees, I know this is probably going to be one of my larger members. Um, what does their office look like? If it's organized, great. If it's a total disaster, then you know I'm going to want to refer them to some chamber programming that can help them with that, with some time management, with some organizational skills. So I can learn a lot about being in their office. 
sometimes the exact reverse is true. Um, restaurateurs are a great example of this. I try never to meet with restaurateurs actually in the restaurant. They will get interrupted at least 500 times during the hour that I'm trying to get their undivided attention. If I can get them out of the restaurant, it really works well for me. So sometimes being there is not such a great idea. Um, sometimes neutral ground is good. OK, let's go back to the notes on the card. Where did we meet them? Um, maybe we didn't meet them at a function. Maybe we met them at Starbucks. Great. We know they love Starbucks. That's a great place to meet. They like that neutral ground. We're going to a place that they enjoy. So sometimes neutral ground is a very good plan. Um, I tend to go with mine whenever possible. I'm very lucky. My chamber is situated on a beautiful piece of real estate overlooking the intercoastal in West Palm. It's a lovely building with a beautiful boardroom, and I can show them that, talk about the seminars and meetings that I do there. Uh, there's a whole huge wall of brochure racks that, that the members leave, so I can talk to them a little bit about what we'll put in there from their company. Having them come to me is a great strength for me. It also positions me as a leader and somebody who can really help them. So usually I try to get them to the chamber whenever possible. It's also good time management for me. I'm not driving all over Palm Beach County meeting them in various locations. So mine works best for me. OK, so we've done the little circle. Now we are ready for why. Let's talk a little bit about why. Why is, um, again, one of those things that we'd like to set up before the meeting. Um, time management is like my mantra. So I need to have this in my mind before I get to them. I don't want multiple appointments with them. I want to be focused in. And where we are in the sales process will help me a lot with this why part. And I might say to them, you know, let's in my email or in my conversation, let's get together so you can tell me more about your company and your role there. You can tell me about what your goals are for your company and for your chamber membership. Um, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about how the chamber can help you, because we're in that introductory phase. Maybe we're sort of in the middle of my sales process. We've already done all of that. So now I'm going to say to them, let's get together and make sure we have all your questions answered. That's a very important part. Until we get that done properly, we cannot move to the next step. Maybe we've already had that meeting. And we've done all of the questions. We're finished with that. So I'm going to say, let's get together and get you started. So I want to establish in my mind why. And in a perfect world, I've also established that in their mind. So we're all on the same page. We all know why we're meeting. OK, we've done the who, what, when, and why, where, why, all of those Ws. Now we're ready for the actual meeting. Um, we want to set the stage. So the first thing we're going to do is develop rapport. Now I will tell you that Jennifer, my communications director, as she's um, south from South Africa, so as she would say, she's having a bit of fun with me here. Um, this is actually a picture of me in my witch's costume. I'm dancing with one of our trustees. And actually, he's lost about 30 pounds since we took this picture, so I'm not sure you'd appreciate me using it. But my point here is that we're going back to those notes on the back of the card. Um, if I had just met this funny person in the picture, I would write on the back of the card, Great Witch's Costume. Because when I meet with her, I'm going to say, you know, I remember that Great Witch's Costume. How was Halloween for you? Do you wear that costume every year? Um, I loved the hat, or whatever it is. Some kind of way of using that intimate detail that I wrote on the back of the card to develop rapport with this person. Remember, people do business with, business with folks they know, they like, and they trust. So you want to give them a moment to trust you and get to know you. You're going to use those notes on the back of the card. Maybe they liked a particular movie, and you can suggest another one. Maybe you talked about a book, and you can suggest another one by the same author or the same type of, type of uh, book. Maybe it was about music. You could talk about an upcoming concert and ask them if they're going to it. Whatever it is, you want to take a moment to develop rapport with them to make sure they get comfortable before you move into the selling cycle. People hate to be sold, but they love to, to talk about themselves and be, with company, be in the company of people that they're really comfortable with. So you can't skip this step. You have to develop rapport with them, and you use those notes on the back of the card to do that. Another thing we want to do is we want to set very clear goals. 
So after we've had our moments of getting comfortable, I use those notes on the back of my card, we're all feeling warm and smoothy here, I set a little goal for the meeting. So I might say, okay, my goal for this meeting is to learn a little bit more about your company and your role in the company and tell you about how the chamber can help you with that. Or I might say, gee, it's so nice to see you again. I know I had given you some information on the chamber last time we met. Let's make sure we get all of your questions answered in this meeting so we can, we can determine whether a chamber membership is the right thing for you. Or if we've already had that meeting, I might sit down and say, you know what, my goal for this meeting is to get you started. Um, I want to talk about which elements of the programming I'm going to suggest are going to work best for you. This is also that moment where if we've missed anything, we can step back and regroup and make sure that we've got all the questions answered, make sure that they really are comfortable with us, make sure that we have the right people sitting at the table. So when we use that moment to say between us, my goal for this meeting is we're making sure that we're both on the same page. So I haven't missed any steps. We're going to have a nice productive meeting. Okay. Let's talk a little bit about mirroring. Because, as I said before, people do business with folks they know, they like, and they trust. You want to match your communication style with your, to your prospects so that they will trust you. If they talk really fast, you're going to want to talk fast, too. If they talk really slowly, you're going to have to slow down or you're going to scare them. If they lean in when they talk to you, you're going to want to lean in, too. They're very intense people, and they want to know that you're intense, too, and you can keep up with them. If they sit back in their chair, you're going to want to sit back too. They're going to take a little while, maybe a little while to get used to you. They want to observe you a little bit. You're going to have to move a little bit slower. So you're going to want to adjust your style. If they talk in numbers and statistics, you're going to have to be prepared with that type of information, with graphs and bars and charts about your chamber membership. Um, you're going to have to provide them that information that they need, or they're not going to be comfortable buying a membership for you. If they really talk in broad brush strokes, um, using a lot of adjectives, then you're going to have to paint a picture or tell a story for them. You're going to have to paint that picture of how the chamber is going to work for them so that they can actually see themselves in it. But you want to use mirroring to match your communication styles with them so that they're really comfortable with you, and they know that they're going to feel comfortable in the chamber after they join. OK, so now let's talk about clear next steps. This is another thing that I work a lot on in my seminars, because clear next steps are excellent time management tools. You need to know what's going to be next, and you need to agree, with, agree between the two of you, you and your prospect, at the end of the appointment. If it's the end of an opening appointment or we've just had that kind of get to know you kind of meeting, I might say, you know what, let's meet next Tuesday. And I'll bring along those graphs or charts or whatever that thing is that that left brain person is looking for. Or I'll bring along an ambassador so they can tell the story about how they were successful in the chamber. But I'm going to set up an appointment for our next time together where we have a clear next step about what it is that we're doing. If we're sort of in the middle of that sales cycle, then I'm going to say, let's make sure that we get all your questions answered. Let's meet next Tuesday after you've had a chance to review this information packet that I've left with you. And let's make sure that we get all your questions answered. Again, this is that moment for me to step back and see if I, I missed a person. Maybe there's somebody else we need to include. Um, maybe they need time to think of all their questions. Maybe they're one of those people who just move a little bit slower. If we've done all of that, and they've said, great, we're ready to go, then I'm going to close them, and I'm going to say, great, welcome to the chamber. I'm going to be sending you an invitation to a new member reception. I'm going to be sending you a referral to that contact you're looking for. I'm going to be sending you some information on this committee that I'm recommending for you. But we need a clear next step at the end of every single meeting. We don't want to leave them stranded on that plane by themselves. We need a clear next step. It's good time management. It keeps them pointed in the right directions, and it gives them a lot of confidence that this is going to be a very productive chamber membership for them. So now we're ready for our favorite part, the closing. If we haven't accomplished that in our last one, this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be working on closing the deal. 
Okay, now, most people oversell. We know this. This is a classic mistake that all salespeople make. You know, you go through your whole thing, you've developed rapport, you've answered all their questions, and they say, that sounds great. And what do we say? We say, oh, yeah, it is, but, you know, you're really going to love our committees, our events, our website, our directories, our newspapers. Whatever it is, you need to stop. When they say, that sounds great, we say, wonderful. And then we say this, and this is important, if you're sure you don't have any more questions, because let me tell you something, if you skip this part, it's going to turn around and bite you almost every time. Always reiterate that. Wonderful. If you're sure that you don't have any more questions, then we are ready for my personal favorite. Uh-oh. Wait a second. I just jumped ahead of myself. I'm going to let Jennifer pull me back. Um, we're ready for our favorite part, for my favorite part, which is closing the deal. Um, again, we don't want to oversell. There's always that tendency to do that, so we want to be sure that we're ready to close the deal. Um, and I have a couple of things that I do that work really well for me. Again, got to make sure they have all your questions answered. That's the most important part. You cannot skip that. But once we've done that, then we're going to go to my phrase, eight words to close the deal. Great. Are we ready to get you started? Why do I use these words? They're very specific, and let me explain to you why. Number one, the word great. That says to them we're all in agreement. I've done my work. I've answered all their questions. I've earned the right to expect that they're ready to join the chamber. Until I earn that right, I have no business expecting that they're ready. So I have to make sure that I answer the questions, and then I say great, because then we know between all of us in the room, that that part's over. Are we ready to get you started? I use the word we here because we're in this together. We're a partner in their success. So I use that word we very specifically. Ready to get you started. Okay, I'm telling them this is just the beginning. Just because we've closed the deal and they're writing the check and filling out the application does not mean that our relationship is over. We are just getting started. We're in this together. We're on the airplane together. I am invested in making sure that they're successful here. So I use those words very purposely. They may work well for you. You might have to think of some of your own. But this works really well for me. So I use that very well. OK, so if they say no, OK, I got to go backwards. I got to fix whatever's wrong. Obviously, I didn't get all their questions answered. Or we didn't have the right decision makers at the table. Something is wrong. So I need to go backwards and make sure that I cover all of those bases again. Or I have a phrase that I use, and I say this. Well, you know, we answered all your questions, got everybody here at the table, everybody we need to make the decision, but it seems like the timing is not quite right for you. I'm going to close your file, and I'm going to wait for you to contact me when the timing is better. First of all, this still leaves the door open. It gives them a chance to explain whatever the problem was. I didn't answer their question. We don't have the right people. Whatever it is that's wrong, it gives them a chance to tell me that. And then one of three things will happen. Either number one, they'll say, no, 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 please don't close my, close my file, which is wonderful, because that tells me that we're ready, and I go right in to close the sale. Then I'll follow up with, great. I'm going to be sending you a new member information. I'm going to be sending you a committee information. I'm going to be sending you that introduction or referral that you're looking for. Or they'll say, OK, well, you know, you, you can close my file for now. And that tells me that something else is going on, that they're not comfortable telling me. Maybe they're selling their business. Maybe they're in the middle of a nasty divorce. Maybe there's an illness in their family or something going on that makes the timing just not quite right for them. And that's OK. I'm leaving the door open for us to go back in at another time. Or they'll say, OK, close my file. Well, OK. Then I say, fine. Um, please let me know if you're ever interested in looking at a chamber membership in the future. I'll bring you some updated information at that time. Again, I'm not closing the door. You never want to completely close the door, but you want to cut to the chase as quickly as you can. Don't have multiple, multiple, multiple appointments with these people. Go ahead and close the file on them. It'll go one way or the other, and it's good time management. So you always want that clear next step. 
okay? Don't leave them stranded on the airplane. You have to have a, a nice, tidy end to this. Whatever that clear step is, you're, they're closed and you're sending them information, um, you're contacting them at a future date, or you're waiting for them to contact you. You need to have a clear next step at the end of every meeting, no matter what kind it is. Very, very important. Okay. So a couple of more things I want to talk about before we wrap this up and get to your questions. The first one is referrals. Are you guys getting referrals from your chamber members? If you are, good for you. Congratulations. You're doing some stuff right, and I'm proud of you. But chances are you can probably still improve that a little bit, and maybe some of these suggestions will help you. If you're not getting referrals from your members, then you're not running your airport properly. And here's a couple of things that might help you. And these are things that I use. Okay, ribbon cuttings. Um, ribbon cuttings are free to our chamber members. And in return, I ask for a couple of referrals. And this is the form that I use to do, to do that. And it actually has worked very well for me. And it's coming as a referral from this person doing the ribbon cutting. So I can use that contact relationship to really um, make that a very warm uh, follow-up for me. Works great. You'd be surprised. Then I also have a form called Members Like You. And I use this with committees. Um, I use it in a lot of different places, in particular with my ambassadors and my board members, people who know that they should be helping us. And I want to make it easy for them. I don't want to make it hard for them. They have to call me or send me an email or whatever. I use this form, and it works really, really well. If you want referrals from your members, you have to make it easy for them. This may work for you. It's worked really nicely for me. Ambassador happy hours. Okay, here's Jennifer having a bit of fun with us again. Um, my ambassadors don't actually look this at the at the ambassador happy hours, but um, these guys look like they were having fun, so we thought maybe we'd go ahead and use this photo of these fictional people. Um, ambassador happy hours are basically um, referral events. Um, they are not open to chamber members. It's an invitation only event. So what happens is I have you know first of all my ambassadors do a lot for me. They're absolutely awesome. And so this is my way of kind of rewarding them. It's a free event. They get two free drinks, free hors d'oeuvres. So it's kind of a thank you. But then I also ask them to bring a non-member with them. So every ambassador that comes is bringing a non-member. And generally speaking, it's a client or a vendor or somebody that they have a pretty warm relationship with. And it's giving them an opportunity to maybe thank them by bringing them to a free networking event. It's just ambassadors and their guests and my prospects. It works particularly well. Some of the prospects are not going to be comfortable in a giant event. They're going to be comfortable in a smaller event like this, but it's a little bit less intimidating. They have an opportunity to talk to the ambassadors, and they can hear their success stories. Rather than just listening to me talk about the chamber, they get to hear from those ambassadors as to what has really worked well for them in the chamber. Um, these ambassador happy hours have been among the most successful programs that I've ever created here at the chamber. The ambassadors absolutely love it. They're meeting people before they even join the chamber, and they love that. They get that great thank you and the pat on the back from me. They're positioning themselves as leaders. They're having an opportunity to thank their favorite clients. It's really just a win-win-win all the way around. So great tool for me. You might want to try it with your group. It's just worked like a charm. Um, now let's talk a little bit about testimonials. Um, for the past year or so, I have been on an absolute rampage for testimonials, and they are working like a charm. Um, again, you know, we can talk until we're blue in the face about the chamber, but it sounds totally different when it comes from our members. So these are a couple of ways that I that I hone in on testimonials. You should be getting them in for basically everything you can think about about your chamber. And I focus on these things in particular. Number one, programming. Um, events. Was there an event that they went to that was particularly fabulous for them? It might be a seminar. We have a focus on training seminars at our chamber that our members absolutely love. I invite prospects to them. It really warms them up as to what the chamber can do for them. I invite new members to them because it really gets them started on the right track. So the seminars have been great. It may be a committee that they joined that they really love and has worked really well for them. It may be our leadership program. It may be some of the visibility tools like the website, the directories, the newsletters. Whatever element of the programming that's worked really well for them, I ask them to write me a testimonial on it. 
I also focus on business categories. So, um, you know, I might ask for a testimonial from somebody who's in hospitality or healthcare or who is an entrepreneur or a CPA or an attorney or a restaurant or a financial services company. I'm focusing on some of those business categories where traditionally I am most successful recruiting new members. And then I'm also focusing on business categories where I'd like to increase my market share. So I'm being very strategic about this. In short, I'm using this business category to highlight the strength of my chamber membership and my chamber and also to highlight my weaknesses, those places where I'd like a bigger market share. So I use those business categories very strategically as well. And then timing. You know, where are they in, the, in their business life? Um, you know, they might write me a testimonial that says, I just opened my company and this thing in the chamber worked really well for me. Uh, they might write one that says, I just started in a brand new position and wow, you know, this worked really well. Um, they might say, I just joined the chamber and I did a ribbon cutting and, you know, the picture was in the paper and wow, it was great. So if they're in the beginning, that can work really well. It may be that they're more in a renewal phase. Maybe they've been a member for a long time. You know, I've been a member for a while, but I just hired a new marketing director and the chamber membership really helped her hit her, you know, hit the ground running with her new position. Um, maybe it's, you know, I've been a member for a long time, but the chamber has this new program that I really like. Um, maybe they've been members for a long time, and you can get to t a testimonial that says something like, I've been a chamber member for 50 years, and the chamber helps keep our business informed on business issues. Or it um, highlights how the chamber acts as a business advocate in our legislators and with our regulators. So where the, that member is in their business life or their career life can also give you an opportunity to hone in and be strategic about those testimonials that you're asking for. I use testimonials in websites, directories, newsletters, event invitations, emails, marketing materials, sales packets. I use them all over the place. Um, they highlight my chamber strengths, and they also help me tell those success stories. It also lets me promote some of my most involved members, my board members, my trustees, my ambassadors, my strategic alliances. So they work really well for me. Okay, guys, I'm about done. Thank you very much for your time, your patience. I hope this has given you a flight plan that you can all use for productive trips and safe landings and lots of lovely trips with many new members. So there you have it. Um, here's my contact information. We're going to be taking some questions now, but I have a tendency to always think of my questions the next day or later on when I'm driving in the car. So if you think of some later, here's my contact information. Please go ahead and, and give me a call or send me an email. I'd love to hear from you. Well, it, fabulous job in, in, in bringing your expertise. And as I mentioned with, to you yesterday, um, very appreciative of uh, bringing your wisdom and the wisdom you've gained over the years. And I'm sure many of us uh, picked up it, at least one thing that uh, kind of resonated that we can bring to our business. So there are a few questions that, that did come in. And again, if you've got, we have a few minutes uh, left here. And if you've got a pressing question, um, go to your dashboard and under the questions tab, go ahead and submit that. So the first question I've got uh, for you, Kelly, is uh, uh, just can I get a sample of the ribbon cutting referral sheet in the members uh, like you sheet. So to all of you, um, we are recording the webinar and we'll be sending out a copy of, of, of the Prezi or send you the link to it as well as the copy of those documents. Would that, would that be fine, Kelly? Oh, yes, that is fine. And as a matter of fact, I'm, I'm, Jennifer and I are working on kind of a little booklet that will go along with this that, will, that I think will help you kind of get a little more out of it. And we'll include those things in it. And of course, you can always email me too. Fabulous. Another question that came in uh, is, uh, do you give your ambassadors leads to non-members uh, to bring to those happy hours? No, I don't. Um, those are my prospects, and I, I bring them to the happy hours. I'm asking the ambassadors to bring somebody that may not know anything about the chamber or somebody that I don't know. Um, I spend a lot of time training my ambassador committee and I'm 
pretty demanding of them, but I have a lot of training so they know exactly how to do it and exactly what I'm expecting. And that's why I feel like I really need to reward them with these ambassador happy hours every once in a while. It's my way of thanking them, and then they get to bring their favorite clients and kind of you know, give them a pat on the back as well. So no, I don't give them a list of people to invite. <laughs> I'm really counting on them to bring Perfect. somebody that's not yet a prospect for me. And, and uh, someone brought up the question, can we repeat this webinar at a later date so other staff members can sit in? And uh, again, uh, this webinar is being recorded and we will be posting it to the ACCE website uh, where we post our webinars so it can be accessed. And if you have any difficulties finding that later, simply email me. Um, again, my name is John Carlson at jcarlson at acce.org and we'd be happy to get you uh, this webinar for your staff. Uh, let's see, next question. Um, have you ever looked for prospects in an area breakdown? In an area breakdown? Yeah. I'm not sure I understand what that what they mean by that. Um, you know, I look for prospects in all kinds of different places. You know, I look for advertisers because, of course, they make great prospects. Um, I, I sometimes look for businesses that are really struggling, um, and maybe that's kind of what you're referring to. Because, yeah, I can help them. And if I can help them, they will love me forever. They will become very happy Productive Chamber members. They will probably become a great referral source for me. So, yeah, sometimes businesses that are, businesses that are in trouble can make good prospects. Um, sometimes we can help them. You know, we all need a little help every once in a while. And if you can reach down and pull somebody up, um, you, then you'll have a raving fan, which is a great thing. And, and are there times when uh, prospects, um, how do I put it, that you should say no? Yes. Um, <laughs> I do a seminar, um, and one of the things I talk about in, in it is some business you can't afford to have. Um, and I use the example of a uh, promotional products company. You know, somebody has a company where they put their names on everything, and you have a client that um, is doing a golf tournament, and they say, well, I want to do golf shirts, and I want you know, the golf shirt to have a white logo, and then you bring it to them, and they say, no, I really want the shirt to be white, so it needs to be a red logo, and you bring that, and they say, no, white's going to be too messy on the golf course, I want them to, you know, you're going back and forth and back and forth, and you're going out of business while they get to see their logo on 200 different shirts. Um, some business you cannot afford to have. If you have multiple appointments with people, and you cannot close them, and you've already gone back, and you've tried to regroup, and ask their questions, and get everybody to the table, sometimes they're just picking your brain, and sometimes they're just not particularly good business people, and you just need to cut the cord. It's, it's hard to do, but some business you can't afford to have, you will go out of business while they are floundering. Sometimes it's a matter of timing. If you, if you close the file on them and cut them loose, they may come back to you in six months or so a little more savvy and understanding what they need and what their goals are, and then you'll be able to help them more. But yeah, sometimes you sometimes you got to do that. It's, it's painful, but you got to do it. Great. Well, uh, it's two past the hour, and uh, thank you, Kelly, for your session today on flying by the seat of your pants uh, equals rough landings. I think you've given us all something to not just uh, smooth out or reduce the chances of a rough ride, but how to ensure uh, a smooth landing. So uh, thank you, Kelly, and thank you, everyone, for joining us today on our ACCE webinar. I'm honored to be able to help any of you if I can. So. Please don't hesitate to reach out to me with any questions, thoughts, suggestions. I'd love to hear from you. Okay. Well, thanks, Kelly. Again, thanks, everyone. We'll talk to you later.